we do in life is a process. Making a cup of tea is a process. Driving to work is a process. Brexit is a process, or at least that's what Boris Johnson tells us. I'm not sure I believe him, though. All processes, of course, can be improved. Not too hard to think how in the case of Brexit. But uh, the question is, how can we improve other processes? And more importantly, how much is it going to cost to actually implement those improvements? Well, our next speakers believe that new, user-friendly AI solutions can help organizations understand operations and improve their performance. Welcome, Alberto Fernandez and Marta Ranz, first party data director and senior data scientist at Minsight. Welcome to the two of you. How are you doing this morning? Thank you very much. Doing well. Doing well. Fantastic. Marta, are you OK? Yes, perfect. yes perfect. perfect. Thank you. Great. Nice to see you. So whenever you're ready, take it away. Go. Go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. OK, so, okay, so thank you very much, much everyone, everyone for coming. Um, my name is Alberto Fernandez. And here with me is also my colleague, Marta. Um, we are both part of the data and intelligence digital practice at Minsight. Um, today, uh, we would like to give you an overview about a very innovative uh, technology to maximize your processes and, and lead your organizations to the operational excellence. Um, this is process mining. Um, um, to understand the concept, uh, we, we could say this, that yes, we live in a world of process. Uh, and whether you find yourself just just following them on your daily basis, or you are um, just under specific situations, uh, what we can all agree is that they can always be improved. So the question is, um, how and uh, how much it is going to, to cost us, okay? So we'll see now um, process mining from a means perspective, um, where we could help um, uh, in this task to improve uh, the business uh, processes. So let me move to the next one. Um, trying to do that. <laughs> okay, now, sorry. So the first of all, uh, uh, we would like to introduce ourselves as a company. Um, what we do specifically at Minsight. So Minsight combines business consulting, advanced digital technologies, and also cybersecurity to tackle every single project from the very beginning to the very end. Um, this is a full range of needs from the strategy or the ideation to the execution of them. And there you have some figures, some numbers. Uh, we are more than 3,000 3, professionals and keep growing. Um, but the area involved specifically specifically in, in process mining project is our artificial intelligence uh, division. There, uh, we have a specific methodology that goes from the ideation of the use case of, or a project um, to the prioritization of, the, of them in a, in a kind of backlog. So um, we have our specific roadmap, roadmap for each initiative but we are always having data as the center of the, of the methodology. So that's the way we, we face artificial intelligence project, but also is the way we face process mining project. This is the, 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 the mother that is going to, to see today in this, in this meeting. So talking specifically about process mining, um, we can explain what is it uh, with a practical example. So, this is an example of how a business process looks like. Uh, in this example, we see um, a client thinking of buying something, then purchasing it. Uh, a purchase order is created. Then we send that purchase order to the vendor. Um, the client receives uh, its goods, and the customer pays the invoice. OK, that's fine. but. How do we know this is not just the theory of how the process should work, uh, but the reality is quite different? Or how do we know if there are any friction points uh, or bottlenecks uh, in this process that could lead us, for example, to a, to a late delivery? So answering those questions is having a classical approach um, uh, to answer them. It is having a huge amount of sessions and interviews 
with the agents that, that, uh, and the person that are involved in this process. This will lead, will lead us to many people involved, a slow um, identification of the inefficiencies, a complicated way to measure the real uh, impact the, uh, of, the, of the process, and of course, to a very subjective opinion of what is happen, happening um, in the process, okay? So, what can we do? Apply process mining. So, process mining tries to solve all those issues by doing a data-oriented analysis uh, of the process. That is 100% objective, and it is based on, on data, not, not opinions or a subjective uh, way to see it. So, while classical approaches stays in the, in, the, in the first or second layers that you are seeing there, so the storytelling and, and defining KPIs, process mining goes to the nucleus by making data analysis of the process through the digital trace. Um, and you can start evaluating patterns and sequence from the data, not from opinions. Um, Bill van der Aals, that I don't know that I pronounce correctly, <laughs> is one of the fathers of, of process mining and said, um, process mining is bridging the gap between the classical process model analysis and the data-oriented analysis. Because it is focusing on processes, but also at the same time is using real data. That's a good definition, but in a more technical view, for us, for me inside, we define it like a set of analytical uh, techniques that identify bottlenecks and uh, inefficiency and improvement opportunities uh, in the business process from the digital trace of the system that support them. So why? So why, why do we need process mining? Because, because um, we did, let's say that we decided to create a process mining division years ago because despite all the investment the organization do in the processes, they are still being supported by rigid technologies, fragmented organizations, and rapidly changing markets um, that results in execution gaps. And, and, and in a huge difference between what is the aspirational or the, or the theory um, or the theoretical way um, to, to work for this process and the reality of it. So um, at the end, <clears throat> what do we need to implement a process mining project? So the first thing that we need is to define the perimeter, that is um, define the business process that is going to be improved. Uh, the second thing is to uh, collect all the traces that we uh, are registering along those uh, along, along uh, that uh, business process. Then we need to break into sub processes and define the type, the typology of those sub, sub processes. And at the end, we start analyzing them. Okay, so let's try to do a focus, a zoom in in each uh, phase. Okay, so. Um, the first one, to select the perimeter. How do we choose the perimeter to isolate a process, a business process? So there is no scientific way to, to select one, but there are some drivers that we can use to select one instead of, of another. Uh, the first one is to choose a process that is uh, that we know that is very complex or, or with a lot, or, or a lot of stages and not easy to follow. The second one is velocity. Uh, try to choose always um, a slow processes because these are the ones uh, with more room to improve them. And of course we have, if we have extremely expensive uh, process or especially relevant uh, process for our business, uh, this could also do um, very, very good process to, to apply process mining uh, techniques. Second, second thing and the most important is the trace. Uh, the digital trace is the fuel of the process mining project. Uh, the more detailed trace we have, uh, the more rich uh, will be the output of, of our projects. Um, so depending on the complexity level of the trace, we can have from basic uh, trace to the business uh, trace. Um, 
what we um, necessarily need is the basic one. Uh, that is a unique identifier representing the primary key uh, of the event uh, happening uh, on the business process, let's say the, the, the case ID or the event ID. Um, uh, and the second one is the activity or the stage in which this uh, case ID is in each uh, specific time, along with the timestamp representing when that case ID has arrived to that specific activity. Um, and you can think, okay, uh, like, like most of, of our client, okay, what happens if we don't have uh, a digital trace? So we have two different um, um, things that could happen here. So the first one is, okay, I don't have a structured trace. That's not a problem. We can use a specific data treatment algorithm um, to allow the trace to, to be understandable. Uh, for, as for, for example, uh, natural language processes uh, techniques, okay? And if we don't have uh, any trace, what we could do is apply task mining techniques, which is a previous state where we connect a monitoring system in the devices of the agents that operates the process to start collecting those digital traces uh, through the clicks and action that they do when they uh, try to operate um, in the in the process okay so next step is typing the, the sub processes so um so if we have selected our business process and we have gathered digital traces then we need to establish the sequence order of how those sub processes happen in the in the whole process uh, we can have assisted or non-assisted or automatic sub processes and which with, with, a, with a huge uh, variety of frequencies, depending on, on, on if they happen always, sometimes, or just uh, exceptionally. Uh, this is very important to know because from our experience, the most uh, painful processes are the ones that are assisted and the ones that need um, a, a specific decisions from humans because they, these are the ones that could, we could uh, optimize um, more, okay? Um, and the last one is the, 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 the analyzing uh, part. Uh, we like to understand in insight uh, that the deliverables of, the, of a process mining uh, project um, contains uh, three different dimensions, the R dimension that, that we say. The first one is the redesign dimension that have to do with the needs uh, to redefine the processes due to inefficiencies uh, in time or a lack of compliance with the, with the theoretical model or, or, or the happy path model. Uh, the happy path model is just the, the way the process should be executing, okay, theoretically. The second one is the resource dimension, which includes, in, includes those modifications to be made to the process uh, in terms of, of management of human or virtual resources. And finally, the recommendation dimension, where the analytical power of the, uh, of the tools is exploited uh, to offer recommendation solution to the lack of decision or the wrong um, decision making in fertile points of, of the process. Uh, for us, um, uh, these are the different scenarios that our clients uh, needs to, to, to apply this technology. The first one uh, is a specific process optimization project uh, where we have uh, to choose that project because we need to maximize that, 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 that project, uh, that process, sorry, um, uh, and, to, and, to, and, to efficient, uh, and to do it efficiently, okay? The scenario two is to try to seize the opportunity of a technological migration to only migrate um, everything that works properly and try to fix everything that was not working properly in that migration. So for that, we try to apply uh, process mining projects uh, before that migration to see which are the pain points of the process and which are the things that we are doing well um, and we are doing bad uh, to only migrate the, the, the good things of the, of the project, the process, sorry. So in this scenario three, um, we try to set a process mining project, just taking advantage of a 
let's say, a strategy project or a, or a business um, process that has increased the scope uh, by acquiring, for example, another area of the company uh, or even the, the acquisition of a new company. Those uh, projects are a strategy project and need a process mining project before just to know if you have to redefine your processes uh, before doing that strategic decision. Um, with all of these scenarios, uh, MeanSight will do is that to propose a specific methodology um, based in three steps. The first one is always to try to measure. Uh, we try to gather all the traces that we have been seeing uh, of the process and try to gather all this data uh, to the specific tools. The second one is to, is to understand it. Then that when we have those data, we try to analyze uh, the traces, the digital traces, and try to understand the process gaps and all the inefficiencies that, that, that we can discover. And the third one and most important is to act. We try to eliminate those gaps um, and pain points to finally unlock the full capacity of execution of the, of the process. So how can we do all of this? Um, of course, by supporting our analysis on tools like the, the one Marta, my coach Marta is going to show you uh, right now, okay? Thank you, Alberto. Um, I cannot share my screen until you. Now, yes. There you have it. Thank you. Um, I cannot. Um, can you stop sharing and I will share? Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. So um, I'm just guessing that you love what Alberto told you and you're wondering how you can implement it. Well, um, we have partnership with the main actors of process mining, uh, Thelonious with its execution management system that integrates not only process mining, but um, a whole universe around it. Uh, mining with HPER that together they cover process mining and test mining. Uh, mine venue that by itself covers process mining and test mining with a very user-friendly interface and process call and timeline PI. And although they are all good options and that's why we have partnership with them, uh, we have a special focus on Stellonis. And you might think, well, why? I'm sorry. So um, the execution management system, uh, as I mentioned before, the truth is that um, they build an ecosystem around process mining with, let's say, um, satellites around it. And some of the things that Thelonis can do is um, real-time data ingestion, thanks to its multiple pre-built connectors, uh, process mining and test mining, planning and simulation uh, scenarios. So, with Celonis, we can simulate how the process is going to look like once some changes are done. Uh, of course, visualization and action flows. And that's one of the main difference uh, with the rest of the solutions because with the same connectors that uh, were, we were able to read uh, data in real time, we can execute actions within the systems in order to prevent the inefficiencies that were discovering uh, that were discovered uh, during the measuring and understanding phases. And um, this is just an example of what we are going to see uh, in a minute, but we wanted to show you this slide so um, you could get used to the, the task force and to remind you once again, um, the steps or the phases that we are going to cover. 
So the first one is to, uh, to measure or to know the process, uh, then to understand the root causes of, of why it's not going the way we wish uh, the process will go. And finally, to act uh, to prevent these inefficiencies from happening. And before we move to the demo, I would like to introduce you the use case that we are going to um, that we are going to see. So we've chosen the order to cash uh, because it's a very intuitive uh, use case that I believe that most of us are familiar with, uh, and we have it experiences from the customer side or from both sides. Um, this process covers uh, from the moment when we as customers. Um, do a purchase, we want to buy something until the moment we get uh, this, this good and the invoice is paid and the, good, um, the delivery date has passed. And you might think that um, this is not uh, that complex, but when you start to, uh, to take into account uh, the logistics, uh, managing the stock, uh, well, the complexity of the process um, grows exponentially. And just once again, I would want to, I would like to uh, remind you the, the three phases. So measure, understand, and act. So um, this is um, Salonis, um, the solution that I was mentioned before. And this is the first thing that we are going to do. So understand the, the, the use case. In this case, we count on 30 million orders and four uh, billion dollars uh, of order amount. And what we see here is uh, about all the steps that, um, that this order is following. So as I mentioned before, um, how the, the order, the customer placed the order, uh, it generates the document, the invoice, how it's sent through the logistic hub, it gets to the customer, we clear the invoice and the delivery date has passed. And the first thing that might um, catch your attention is that uh, we have 209 variants. What, is, uh, what does it mean? Well, the thing is that Thelonis automatically has detected these variants. And just imagine um, the effort and time that this um, detection might have cost if uh, we had to do it manually the way what it was um, done before. Uh, so if we want to uh, see all the variants, how, how the pattern looks like, um, we can add more and more variants. And what we see is that uh, we do no longer have this straight, perfect line that we saw at first, but instead we have uh, like a branched process um, and it's not like that simple anymore. And I would like to focus on these four variants uh, because we are going to see some of the things that we are going to see later in the, in the demo. So in the second variant, for instance, what we see is that uh, after the customer placed the order, uh, we detected a stockout. And what is the, the consequence of this, of this stockout? Well, what we see is that in the first variant, we, we had like it took, the process took uh, just four days. And in the second one, it took seven. So basically we double the time just because of this detection. And also in the fourth variant, what we see is that um, after the place uh, was done, uh, because of the product is not available anymore, we have to cancel the order. So uh, this is just something that we see because we get the uh, objective end-to-end uh, -end process. But maybe we, we, do not, we don't want this level of uh, detail and we want just to uh, have a, a higher level of the process. That's why we define the KPIs. Um, in this case, we, we are focusing on on-time delivery um, reducing returns and cancellations and increasing productivity. Um, because what we see from our uh, KPIs is that we are um, quite far from what we should, where we should be. 
So this is something that we should. Um, and the first one we are going to to look at is uh, the on time delivery rate. In this case, we see that we are quite far, and uh, the most concerning thing will be that in the last month we we suffer a uh, kind of a drop. So we want to analyze why. These are the, the task force that uh, we saw in the slide. So on the left side, we have the process. And on the right side, we have analysis focused on the specific KPI that we are trying to study. Uh, and we want to like see how they analyze impact on the process. So in this case, we are going to focus on the late orders. And what we see is that, well, the variance and the process has changed because we have selected like a group uh, among the whole population. And uh, what we see now is that the first variant, uh, it suffers from stock up. So this is something that we should uh, put attention on. But if we want to look uh, in a more general way, we also can analyze this on-time delivery rate based on different dimensions. For instance, upper category, vendors, um, clients, channels. So all the dimensions and all the granularity that we have uh, in the data, then it, um, it allows us to go uh, to deep dive into all the data and all the process. And in this case, we're going to focus on sportive equipment and t-shirts because, um, well, they kind of have like different on-time delivery rate. And we might be wondering, well, what's the difference between just the, these two products? Well, we can, we can do this, uh, uh, this comparison uh, thanks to a benchmarking dashboard that um, allows us to um, contrast two different products or different dimensions. So what we, the first thing that we see, right, is that um, in the t-shirts um, category, we see as the first variant, let's say the most common variable, variant, uh, the nice line, uh, straight line that we saw at first. But if we see the sportive equipment, uh, what we see is that the first variant uh, with 19% uh, of occurrence, um, it suffers from a cancellation. But we might want to just uh, extract this cancellation and uh, forget about this cancellation for this specific analysis. So we can just delete and not take, in, not take it into account um, this group. And what we see if we extract uh, this kind of population uh, is that while for the t-shirts we maintain the same um, variant, well for the sportive equipment, now the most um, frequent variants is the stock up detected. So it shouldn't be new at this point of the demo, but uh, this is something that we have to just put that for on. Um, also, another thing that we should be considering is the cancellation rate. If you remember, um, in the in the dashboard, the, the executive um, um, dashboard, we also had the cancellation rate and the return rate. And if we focus on the cancellation rate, what we see it that is almost um, double as, uh, as it should be. And also, we are going to repeat to zoom into these. Um, into this KPI. Um, so here we have like the same sequence. Uh, on the left side, we have process, and on the right side, we have the analysis. And uh, what we see as the root cause of um, cancellation is that the first one uh, is because uh, of stock issues. That is something that we already knew. Um, but if we um, consider the second main cause, what we see, um, is that uh, the customer doesn't need the product anymore. And we've chosen this uh, second uh, root cause because it has a direct impact on our financial uh, operations. Because if we um, look at the process, what we see is that after the delivery date change, we get a cancellation. 
but the thing is that the, the order was already been uh, sent. So we have a double consequence. Uh, so the first one is the money that we are not making because of the cancellation. But also as the process was on its way, um, the product was on its way, sorry, um, we've invest our money. So it has a direct impact on, on our accounts and we should take action. And these are the action flows that I was mentioned before. And thanks to these um, action flows, we can implement automation, automatizations um, inside the systems. So based on the cancellation risk that we um, can calculate it thanks to a projection and interacting with more contextual data, uh, we can split or divide the process in terms of this cancellation risk. So if this uh, risk is higher um, than on threshold, let's say 30%, um, well, we will update the priority order uh, within SAP and then send a message um, through Teams. But if it's lower, uh, we will update the delivery date and then send an email and just inform our manager. So um, just what, what have we done until this point? Uh, we've understand the end-to-end -end process, we've identified the root cause, and we've act in terms of preventing this from happening again. And just imagine that uh, you've implemented all these, um, all these actions. And well, we, we can see the results uh, six months later. And the results are that, um, our on-time delivery rate has increased, the cancellation rate, rate has decreased, and the first time rate or perfect order rate ha has also been, been increased. And well, I hope that um, you like uh, what we have uh, shared with you and you find it uh, interesting uh, the same way that we do. And the last thing that we would like to ask you is how can we help? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alberto, Marta. Thanks for that presentation. I, I've certainly enjoyed the process of, of listening to that. I thought it was pretty clear. We have a little bit of time for some questions. So let me fire away. Are you prepared? Are you ready? Yeah. You look nervous. Yeah. Don't worry. They, they, they should be fairly pain-free. So uh, we have a question from Ignacio who asks, how do you deal with the visualization and analysis of processes that have a very wide range of possible steps and uh, possibly the process path is very big? Who wants to take that one? I can go if you want. Well, in our experience, uh, we try to uh, try to see in a, the, all the steps in a hierarchical way, so we can zoom in and zoom out uh, in terms of um, going deep if we need a for a specific product, and for the rest, like we have a more general view of the process. And also, you have to, to, to take into account that all this uh, dashboard that you have seen is all uh, very flexible. Uh, you can do whatever you want in your processes, doing drill down uh, uh, and, and zooming, as, as Marta said, um, building any kind of uh, KPIs and dashboard that, that you, you really want to, to see and, and the ones that you are really worried about. Okay, okay great. Uh, we have another question here from, from Maria. Coming back to um, what you were talking about near the beginning, Alberto, about choosing a perimeter. So it seems like that maybe could take forever. How do you know that you've chosen well a perimeter? I mean, it sounds a little bit stressful. Give us a bit more guidance here, I think, yeah. is what Maria wants. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe it's stressful. But at the end, what you need to, to, thought, uh, uh, to think is that um, whatever you have uh, um, uh, a process that you may think that is complex or is relevant for your business, just try to do uh, some um, quick analysis. You don't have to do uh, 
uh, the whole range of the of the process and take every single trace just to do uh, a, a quick step, uh, let's say uh, assessment, okay? So just try to, to go to the pain points that, that you think that are pain points, of course, you are not going to discover that until um, you do process mining, but just try to focus on a specific area, try to uh, gather some traces of those specific sub processes in the process and try to do just a small, it is just one, one week or two weeks uh, analysis and see, okay, there is a lot of pain points in just this specific focus. Let's see uh, in the whole process, okay? So this is a discovery process also. <laughs> Sorry if it's stressful for you. <laughs> help I guess uh, you have to just start somewhere yeah yeah so uh, we, you said at the beginning Alberto also that everything in life is a is a process do you uh, really everything surely some things are impossible to to measure and quantify or do we really believe that we can break down everything into something that is measurable mm. oh, of, of course not everything okay <laughs> But we believe, we firmly believe that every single business process in, in, in most of the companies can be measurable. And if it's and measurable, it's measurable uh, uh, if it's supported by data, then you can apply process mining. Fantastic. Just uh, as a final question to you both then, how do you think process mining will evolve in, in the next few years? Where do you think we could get to with, the, with this technology? So, so let me say that I think that process mining is just the uh, center of the technology, okay? And at the end, what you can do is just to um, see the process from the very beginning to the very end, and then to apply a lot of automatization to, uh, to your process. What Marta uh, has shown you in the demo is just a part of the things that you can do. But at the end, what you can do is to control the whole process and also, also the optimization. So you can uh, obtain an, a hyper optimization that we say in, in Minsight, okay? Uh, having the full perspective of the, not only the, the inefficiencies of the process, but also the hyper automatization that you can apply to, to those processes. So at the end, you can control your whole processes from the discovery to the lot of specific actions um, to, to do your process in a touchless way. Let's say, okay. I think Marta, do you have anything you wish to add there? Yeah, just to yeah. complement uh, that what we are seeing is that all the solutions are more and more integrated. So it's no longer just process mining or task mining, but the whole solution. And that's the powerful uh, in, in this kind of uh, solutions. Thank you very much to both of you. That's been a, a fascinating talk. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and thank you so much for your presentation. Thanks very much, guys.